Yeah, just a bee charmer. Edgy thread good. That's what you are, a bee charmer. Uh, yes, itchy thread good, a lesbian fashion icon if I ever saw one. I want everything that she wears. I do. Nobody warned me that watching this film was like getting roundhouse kicked in the feelings. Yeah, my eyes welled up a little bit whilst watching this film and that's impressive because I stopped feeling a long, long time ago. Hi guys, welcome to a video and in today's video I'm just going to be reviewing the film Fried Green Tomatoes. I am so happy that I finally had a chance to watch this film because it's a classic. It's not just a classic but it's a lesbian classic. I can imagine this film made so many lesbians in the early 90s very happy. This film is well loved for a reason. It is. As a disclaimer, I do think that this film is a lesbian film. However, the lesbianism in this film relies on suggestion. It is not explicit and therefore the relationship between Iggy and Ruth is up for interpretation because nothing is explicitly stated. But for anybody who can read a room, I, I think it's quite obvious what this film is about. And I think it's fair to say that it's a lesbian film for sure. And a lesbian classic as well. I don't think the lack of explicitness is detrimental to this film or takes away from it in any way, so yeah. But let's get into it. So Fried Green Tomatoes follows trapped housewife Evelyn Couch, who whilst visiting a nursing home encounters Ninny Threadgood, an outgoing older woman who brightens Evelyn's outlook by sharing tales from her past. As Ninny recounts the exploits of her free-spirited sister-in-law Iggy, owner of a small Alabama cafe in the 1920s, and the bond Iggy shared with her friend Ruth, Evelyn gains the confidence to change her own life for the better. So what did I like about this film? Oh, absolutely everything. First of all, Kathy Bates, self-explanatory, always a gift to see her on my screen. Secondly, this film is just a collection of heartfelt moments wonderfully threaded together and it also explores a lot of the socio-political issues within that time period. Racism, gender non-conformity, domestic abuse and the lack of justice in the legal system. I especially love the way that the film explored gender non-conformity and I think it's portrayed portrayal of a gender non-conforming woman is one of the reasons why this film is so beloved by lesbians. A lot of lesbians are, to a degree, gender non-conforming and so a lot of us recognise something of ourselves in the character of Iggy Threadgood and it's not just her outward appearance that we can connect to. Iggy is a character who is just so free and completely herself and it's refreshing to see a female character in film who isn't confined and trapped by her womanhood. She exists outside of it. I also adored the vintage aspects of the film, especially the cars and the clothing. There's also a very young Yoga Jones from Orange is the New Black in this film, which was a fun surprise for me personally, being an Orange is the New Black fan and all. As I say, this film is very emotionally intense. There's quite a bit of death. Buddy and Ruth's deaths in particular are very emotional. I was holding back the tears. But there's also some very heartwarming moments, especially between Iggy and Ruth. And I was really touched by the part where they were chucking food out of the train for the less advantaged people. And like I said, this film will roundhouse kick you in the feelings. It just will. Now, the film largely revolves around the relationship between Iggy and Ruth, which, in my opinion, certainly goes beyond just friendship. The film suggests this in a way which is both subtle and yet obvious. We have Iggy's reaction, which is gay panic, to being kissed on the cheek by Ruth. We have the fact that Iggy doesn't attend Ruth's wedding with Frank. And we see the way Ruth just gives Iggy this knowing look more than once, which says it all. They were also both more or less parents to Ruth's baby and neither of them seemed interested in the company of anyone else. 
especially once they started living together. These are all very obvious signs that their relationship was a romantic one, but of course a relationship like that would have to be hidden. And I'm not altogether sure a mainstream audience in 1991 would have understood or appreciated a relationship like that all that much either. So it's not surprising that the film only alluded to a romantic relationship and never gave a confirmation. Of course, a lack of confirmation does leave room for debate, which is fair. I mean, everybody will interpret this film in their own way, but honestly, I don't feel like the film shied away from the true nature of Ruth and Iggy's relationship at all. It was there to see for anybody who can read a room and the intensity of their relationship shine through regardless of its subtlety. Of course, that kind of ambiguity surrounding a lesbian relationship wouldn't fly in this day and age, but we're living in very different times, so it's not really fair to hold the film up to today's standards of lesbian portrayal and representation. Overall, I love this film. It's a classic, and I can absolutely understand why it means so much to a generation of lesbians who struggle to see themselves and their relationships represented anywhere else. This film also resonated with me because it essentially comes from a place which explores what it is to exist in an unjust world, what it is to love and what it is to lose that love, which just about anybody can connect to, no matter the time period. Okay guys, if you've seen Fried Green Tomatoes, let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who likes other women in a suggestive way, come and join the Sapphic Underground Club. Just come and do it. It is so good for the soul. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.